All right, so we're going to go ahead and tear apart the ASI Air Plus and uh, install a new operating system on it. <laughs> so this should be fun. Uh, the ASI Air Pro is super easy if uh, if you ever want to reload the operating system with uh, Open Astro or any other um, software, AstroBerry, um, Indigo Sky, etc. It's super easy. All you have to do is just uh, remove the SD card and load up a new SD card. So um, that's super easy with the ASI Air Pro. Uh, not a whole lot to it. ASI Air Plus, on the other hand, is a lot more uh, a lot more work involved in, in basically trying to load uh, an operating system onto it. So basically, um, I've got my tools here. Um, you need a 2.5 um, uh, basically bit for the Allen and a 2.5 uh, bit for the uh, um, essentially the uh, Phillips screwdriver. So to start, we just need to take off the back. So I'll try my best to keep this in frame. All right, so basically you get the four screws off and then you can open it up. So at this point, uh, this is the ZWO daughter board that we need to take off. So now we'll flip over to our Phillips. All right, so those are all the Phillips. And then at this point, the board will completely step out. Now it's connected to the Raspberry Pi uh, module four board um, through the Wi-Fi connection. So we'll just disconnect uh, the antenna. And then there's two more screws that they have on the board uh, to remove the board. And essentially you can just um, pull straight up on the board, it'll pop out. So on the bottom, there's basically some connectors that connect into the daughter board. Uh, and this daughter board is basically ZWO, uh, ZWO's uh, own board that they've custom built. Um, it's got your network ports, your USB ports, your power ports, uh, a DSLR connector, um, uh, basically a 12 volt to power it on, on and off, a reset button. Um, there's also a USB um, C connector and then a micro SD card. So this is their own custom board that they built. Uh, as you can see here, it's also labeled as ASI Air uh, Plus version 2.0. So this is a custom board that they made um, that requires custom drivers and a custom kernel. Um, and essentially I wrote that um, by ripping it off uh, their config files from the original stock uh, system and finding out how they designed the, the basically their config files for uh, the deconfig for the kernel. Um, so um, essentially, since I, um, I don't mess with the main board, I actually bought a secondary board so I can do development on it. So I'll just set this aside for now. And what you need to load up the operating system is the Raspberry Pi Compute 4 IO module board. So basically this is another Raspberry Pi, um, which I, uh, I indented so I could keep track of which one's which with a little uh, black dot there. Uh, but essentially, it's it just plugs into the daughter board um, on this, or I should say the I.O. board. Uh, and then essentially, when you plug it in, we can connect it to the computer. So essentially, to connect it to the computer and get it running, the first thing that you need to do is you need to set up a jumper pin on pin one. And if you actually look at the board, uh, I'll try to get in there, you can actually see that it says on there, uh, jumper to disable the EMMC boot. So what that means is that when we disable the EMMC boot, it won't boot up uh, and essentially we'll be able to access the operating system by putting on the jumper pin. The next thing that we need to do is hook up a USB micro SD cable, um, which I have over here. So this will basically connect into the board like so. So I've got it in there, right? Yeah. So it'll basically connect to the board and we'll hook this into our computer. And then in here, uh, basically we have a 12 volt uh, DC connector to power the whole board. So basically what I'm gonna do is plug in the power port and then connect this to my computer. And then I'll basically walk you through how to reload the operating system on it through a Linux computer. Um, the steps that I'm taking can be done on Windows or a Mac uh, computer. There's just different software that you have to download. So. Um, Okay, at this point we've got the board all set up and ready to go. USB cable, jumper, and then the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. 
So we just get our power cable that I'm actually stealing from my mount. It's just a power supply that I use for my ioptron and plug it in. And <clears throat> once the light goes red, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and hop onto the computer and we'll do the rest. All right, at this point, we're gonna open up terminal and we're gonna open up the um, RPI boot utility. Um, trying to talk and type is not always ideal, but whatever. There we go, password. And at this point, uh, it's basically just booting up the board. Uh, what this is, this utility allows for the RPI boot is to essentially boot up the EMMC so we can see the local storage. So there's the storage, it just showed up. Um, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is open up the uh, RPI imager. And this is the Raspberry Pi imager. You essentially just choose your operating system. Uh, this is gonna be custom. And as soon as I can find it, I can't remember which folder it's in. Nope. There we go. Then we're going to choose the storage and uh, the RPI boot, and then just write password, and then I'm going to go ahead and just let this thing rip. It takes a minute to do, um, so I will uh, speed it up here as it goes through. It, it takes uh, roughly about uh, 20 minutes or so to load. All right, so at this point, it's uh, finished. We'll go ahead and click on Continue. And essentially at this point, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the Raspberry Pi. All right, at this point, we're done. Um, so we can just unplug the power and then we can go ahead and remove the board. So the board's ready to go back into the ASI Air Pro daughter board. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and just reassemble everything. Um, I'm not gonna put in all the screws because you don't need to. It'll stay in place, uh, and then essentially we'll just connect back in the Wi-Fi antenna. And then we'll go ahead and reconnect the board, and then I just like to drop in one screw just so that for testing purposes at least it's good to go. But if you want, and this is your production system, um, I would say... Put everything in after you test it, make sure that it boots up and everything's working properly. So at this point, we'll go ahead and install it onto uh, the mount. So at this point, I have all my gear configured and set up. So I'll just go ahead and mount it in real quick. And then plug in the power port for the camera. And then we have our USB connectors. This is for the camera. and also the electronic autofocuser and, um, and uh, filter wheel and what else? Off-axis guider, I think that's everything. So that's all connected. And then finally we'll uh, hook in power here real quick to the back so that it's plugged in from the mount. So if I can just see what I'm doing here, there we go. So everything's hooked up at this point, so I can go ahead and power up the mount, and then uh, we'll connect to the Open Astro Wi-Fi. All right, welcome to Open Astro 1.0. Assuming that you've got your ZWO ASI Air Pro or Plus reloaded with the Open Astro software, this will be a guide on essentially connecting to it and controlling your device. The first thing that you need is a Windows computer, a Linux computer, or a uh, Apple computer and you'll also need to install K-STARS. Once that's all taken care of, the next thing you want to do is connect to the Open Astro Wi-Fi. So on my computer, I can essentially click on my Wi-Fi and choose Open Astro and hit Connect. On Windows 11, it's going to ask you uh, to use the 8-pin from the router. Instead, we need to use a security key, and the security key is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we hit Next, and it'll connect. The next thing I like to do is make sure that we actually have a connection to the device. So we'll ping it, and the IP address is 10.42.0.1. If all works correctly, we should be pinging properly to the ASI Air uh, running OpenAstro. 
Once that's verified, the next thing we want to do is just open up KSTARS. If you are setting this up for the first time, you can go through and just follow the prompts. Uh, essentially, you're going to get to a point where it's going to let you create a profile. You can also create a profile if you click on this little looking dome. And in here, this is basically what the profile wizard will look like. So you just hit next. The equipment is attached uh, to a remote device. And you just want to choose other. We're going to type in that IP address 10.42.0.1 and hit next. We can just call it my Astro Gear if you want, and then basically create. So at this point, you want to just choose all the different hardware that you have. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and just type in gem. Oh, I think it's under Ioptron. There we go. Ioptron gem 28. For my CCD, uh, I'm using the ZZ, uh, ZWO. And same with the guider. For my focuser, I'm using the ASI Electronic Auto Focuser. And for my filter, I'm using the ASI EFF. To take advantage of using the ASI Air Power Ports, you just basically want to hit the drop down menu, and in here you should see ASI Air Power. You can hit Save, and then hit the Start button. And it should connect to all the gear. So basically, it should show all my information essentially in here you're going to see the ASI air power on on this con, uh, particular setup what I have is I have port 4 set up for my camera so I can go here and go to camera and then I can turn it on and that'll power it on then I need to go to my camera and on my camera I can turn on the cooler and if you listen If you can hear that, the power is now on to the camera. So at this point, this is just a basic um, walkthrough of setting up and getting connected to essentially Open Astro. I'm not going to go through all the instructions of using uh, this uh, the KSTAR software. There's more information online, and there's a link down below.